Greetings, darklings from across the internet. It is I, Katie, and with me as always, the fantastic Precious Ken. Hello, it is I, the Duchess Precious Ken, with you once again for the Sounds and Shadows podcast. With us today is a very special guest. Like always, we're very excited to talk and we have a very special preview and premiere today of a new video by the lovely V of Safira V. Say hi. Hi. I'm, I'm also the Safira of Safira V, so. You're all. <laughs> all of the above. How are you doing? The complete package. Good. I got my favorite tea on today. Woo! That's that right. is. That is a hot, yeah. hot looking t-shirt. I had to get the business out of the way. I had to wrap first. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're so happy to have you here today. Uh, it seems that there's a little bit of excitement in the future. Um, it, you have this amazing video coming out. It's super beautiful. We've had the opportunity to take a glance at it. Um, what inspired this video? Um, well, there, there's a very long story behind the song and the video. Um, do, do you mind if I just, you know, gab on about that? Please <laughs> do. <laughs> okay. So World My Voice um, was a song that I wrote to sort of, um, I guess, talk about the fact that at some point in everyone's life, you, you, you just have to sort of let it all out and let people know what's going on uh, regardless of the situation, maybe it's personal or, um, you know, like a work-related thing or whatever, um, there's a lot of people that just keep it all inside because they're afraid for whatever reason, maybe they feel intimidated to speak out. So that, that's what, that's really what the song is, is about. And as I was writing the music to it, um, it just wasn't like building the way I wanted it to when I wanted it to be big, at, you know, at the end. Um, you know, and it's all about having your back against the wall and then finally getting out there and saying it. And um, so I did a couple things towards that end. I asked uh, Ken Magerman from Amaranth to add some vocals. It's me. Um, I, yeah, I had heard some of the work that he'd done um, for Melody Whores, This Is How We Were Taught to Pray. And he just, he just rocked it at the end of that song. It was just gorgeous. And everybody was talking about it. So um, I, I kind of added him into the song to, to get that projection and, and he, he brought it. He, he totally did um, what I was hoping he would do for the song. Um, but musically, it, it still wasn't, it still didn't have that oomph. So then um, I went to Jules Seifert who mixed and mastered The Mask, um, the album that that song is from. And I, Typically, when I give Jules my stems, they, I give him the stems with effects, and he mixes it from there and then masters. Um, but I said, Jules, I, it's just, I'm not, it's, it's not doing the thing that I want it to do. Um, so I gave Jules my stems dry and just let him, and handed him the keys, just let him do all the production and all the mixing and, you know, um, and when I got it back, I was stunned because that was it. That was it. That was exactly what I wanted. And I'm not surprised because, you know, Jules is just a genius in that respect. And that's why I work with him. Um, so so now, I got, now I got this song. Go ahead. I was going to say, for people who don't know, could you, you know, just say who yeah. Jules is and Armla, you know, and just kind of talk yeah. a little bit about that? So, so Jules plays several different roles in this community. Um, he's one of the Armalite guys, along with Giles and, and Brooke. Um, he is in Der Sector. He's in Seer. Um, I think he's got some other projects as well, yeah. um, but he also owns um, Epic Audio Media, where mm -hmm. he does mixing and mastering. Um, that's sort of separate from Armlight, but it kind of works together too. He does a yeah. lot of um, mastering for, um, you know, like he did Chris Connolly's, you know, latest album. Yeah. Um, and I think he mastered uh, the, the Pig album too. So, I mean, he's, you know, he's got like a ton of industry experience. He's, he's fantastic. He's great to work with. So, so now I, you know, I had the song that I wanted and I knew I was going to do a video for greed and I did a video for greed because that was the single, but when it came time to put the track order together for the album, um, I wasn't sure if I wanted to put greed up front or not. It had already been released as a single. And Jules said, I, I think you should put something like world, my voice or hide from me 
one of your really big songs up front. Um, so I, I decided on World My Voice, um, although Jules really liked Tired for me. I think that was his favorite one. That's a great. And um, I thought, all right, well, that's, that's got to be the next video. So now I'm wondering, what do I, what do, I do for this video? Um, so I, I met um, a uh, local film student, A.J. Bonacci. He goes to the Rochester Institute of Technology Film School, um, also known as RIT, if you're, if you're from the area. And um, I met him through my older daughter. They're both college age. That's awesome. And I saw some of um, AJ's work. He showed me a couple of short films that he did. He did this one called The Yo-Yo that was, it was just so dark and so menacing and it had masks in it and everything. And I'm like, I gotta work with this dude. I gotta work with this dude. And then he showed me a, a, a film called The Ritual that he had done. Um, and it had this, priest and it had this whole sacrifice um vibe happening um and i, I won't get into more of the visuals because you'll 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 see some of it in the video we actually took some of the shots from the ritual and i can tell you like after you know after we show it we, you know we can i can explain are we going to talk after we show it sure okay okay, okay. um because <laughs> i can explain afterwards you know what what you saw was from the original one but it had uh, a lot of, it had the vibe and it had a lot of the visuals I was, I was looking for, for World My Voice. So um, I, I turned, I, I sort of used the um, sacrifice analogy to tell the story of, of being able to, to, to get your voice and sort of the sacrifice you go through sometimes to, to get to that point. There's so many people in history who have sacrificed um, to, have, to have a voice. I, I'm not even going to start naming people. I think you know who they all are. Um, so there's, you know, there's kind of a metaphor going on in the video. Um, and there, there's a sacrifice theme in the video. Um, and so that's, that's sort of the whole, I know that's a really long winded story, but <laughs> no, I mean, that's what we want is I, I love having some explanation be behind what built to that visual. Cause you're right. Yeah. It, I, I love the way the song and the video connect. And, and it really does, it's one of the, I remember I said this to you when you first showed it to me, is it really tells a story. And that's not something there in every video nowadays, where a lot of times it's about just a cool image or a cool shot or something, but you're not really trying to, you know, do like the Paul Abdul Rush video with Keanu Reeves telling a movie. Yeah, I referenced that. And, <laughs> and, and, you know, tell a whole story all out. And I did on this video, it really does have an aspect of, it's a simple concept. It's mm -hmm. not, you know, an elaborate story, but it's right. a clear, concise one, and it matches what's happening in the music. So that's why I thought this video worked so well and was so powerful. You know, yeah, the, go ahead. would you want us to play the video now and then continue the explanation afterwards? We could do that. Um, yeah, yeah we, can, we can do that. All right. Hold the clip. Yeah, without further ado, this is Safira V, World Is My Voice. Corona top, the party's over. This train has left, you're standing on the
That was amazing. Um, that video is like Ken was saying, it tells a really good story from beginning to end. It's like, like I got a lot of, uh, like vibes from some of my favorite like witchy shows and stuff from it and knowing the backstory made it that much more impactful like the ritual sacrifice element of it is uh you said that there was more that you wanted to explain after the video was seen like what kind of stuff do you want to get into about like the fine little points in it well, yeah, so I wanted to explain which, which scenes were actually from the ritual that, that we kept from um, AJ's um, short, short film. So the, the priest was from the ritual and um, the hand coming down from the tree, that was also from the ritual as well. And I just thought they were both gorgeous, gorgeous shots. Yeah. Um, so anything you see with the priest in it um, or that, that hand at the end, that, those were all from the other film. Um, I also wanted to mention that it was filmed at the White, White Lady Castle, which is legendary in, um, in Rochester, New York, um, at Durand Eastman Park. And the, just to kind of give you a backstory of, of the history there, yeah. um, the White Lady uh, lost her daughter in a car accident. This, I, you know, legend has it, I think it was back in the 70s. Um, and it was an episode of Supernatural. Yeah. How was it? Yeah, so, yeah. The white, white lady, really? Yeah, oh, they did. Really? An episode. I mean, they do a lot of those, like you know. Okay. Oh, that's so cool. Sort of, so one of them. So they, was, yeah. So they were supposedly uh, the daughter and friends or whatever were driving um, down the road that goes through the park, and got in a terrible accident and, and she died. And the white lady is her mother and is is fabled to roam the park at night in her white gown. Um, so that's sort of the, you know, creepy story behind the, the, and the cat, that wall that you see, that stone wall that you see where we have like the sacrifice table in front of it or the altar in front of it, um, that's supposedly her castle. Now, I, I think um, in reality, it was a mill because back in the day, um, Rochester was known as um, the flower city as a milling flower. Mm -hmm. um, it's it since changed to the flower city because of our lilacs. So different kind of flower. But anyways... <laughs> I love spooky stories. This is amazing. <laughs> and like, that's the type of stuff that like makes the videos like so many more layers. Like, did you feel this like overwhelming sense of like honor in a way to be able to use the film footage from the ritual? Oh yeah. I, well, I did. And I, and I almost went with the white gown thing, um, mm -hmm. to sort of honor the, the white lady yeah. table. Um, I just don't look that great in white. So oh, <laughs> I just I, 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 could, I couldn't rock it. I just couldn't rock it. <laughs> well, it was a really fun video and like it is really impactful. Like um when you were writing the song, was this something that was more of a uh, observation of society or was this something that you felt like very connected with like was there kind of like a personal like you don't need yeah. to say it. i can edit it out oh, yeah. if you don't want to talk. oh no 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 i i'm i i you know i talk about these things yeah the, my last album um, my game and this album are both pretty personal um yeah. and uh have a lot to do with situations and relationships i've i've been in where i felt somewhat oppressed uh somewhat abused um taken advantage of or not appreciated um, so again, World My Voice has a lot to do with, you know, finding the, finding the courage, um, regardless of what you have to sacrifice to, to find that voice and, and tell the world your story, you know, whatever, whatever that story is, whatever you have going on. So yeah, it was, it came from a, a very personal place. Um, and a lot of, it's funny, a lot of my songs recently have, have been coming from there. Originally when I started the whole Safira V project, which was only about two and a half years ago, um, I was, cause I'm so into science fiction. Um, my, like my first EP was all sci-fi. It was about a, a time traveler. It was actually called The Traveler. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I did a lot of that sort of theme. Um, and then, I don't know, it just, it started, I started feeling like, all right, I, I think, I think I have a different story I need to tell now. And I've spent the past couple albums um, telling that story. So in, in Greed, again, my other video from um, The Mask, it, it's really about, you know, like when two people are together, 
it, it seems like, you know, sharing is, is so easy, but then um, when you make the decision to lead separate lives, um, that's when the ugliness comes out and that's when people start getting greedy. And I see it so many times with, you know, couples divorcing, um, you know, even not married couples that are, you know, separating for whatever reason, that that's when the knives come out, you know? So uh, again, just um, personal experience. Yeah. If you were <laughs> like to give a message with your new album to your listeners, what would you want that message, like that personal touch to be? Um, well, I think we all, we all need to sort of embrace um, the situation, the people that we've become due to the situations we've been in. Um, and there's, there's a song called Darkness on the, uh, on the album where I say, I, I will embrace the darkness because we all have that darkness as we get older, you know, we lose our innocence and, and we, you know, we start having these, you know, this dark side, dark thoughts, and you kind of, you kind of got to own it and, and embrace it um, and integrate it all into who you are. You know, there's another song called Addict that has more to do with me dealing with other people um, that have, um, I've fortunately never really had to deal with my own addiction other than to chocolate mostly, but, <laughs> but I know it's, it's a really- But that struggle is real. Yeah, <laughs> that struggle is real. But, you know, it's a heavy thing, all, all different kinds of addictions, you know, gambling, alcohol. Um, and, uh, you know, so that song was sort of about my uh, experiences with um, folks dealing with, with addiction. So it, there's, there's all these little stories in there, and, and they're all pieces of, of me. And um, that's my way of sort of, you know, get, getting, gathering all those pieces and, and talking about them and kind of, you know, throwing them together um, on an album and, and saying, okay, here's, here's my story this time, you know. <laughs> what, is that in the background? It's Finn. <laughs> We're leaving his head off over here. Aww, He's just showing support. I think that what your, what your message is for the album is so deep and it is so personal, but it's something that so many people can relate to. And that's like one of those double edged swords where it's like what you're doing is bringing people strength, but it really sucks that so many people have to go through these like struggles just to yeah. like feel I don't know equitable or something in their own world like right. I really appreciate what you've done here <laughs> <laughs> well thank you and you know the whole concept of the mask is just you know we all we all were and it has nothing to do with corona <laughs> even though that's sort of the timely topic um but you know we we all we all wear masks in our lives and sometimes it's you know, to hide um, sadness, which Mask of Happy is, is about that. Um, sometimes it's to hide ill intention, you know. Uh, everyone's got a mask they wear, and, and anyone who says that, that they don't, uh, they're lying to you. You know, I mean, everyone at some point in your life, you, you, you've had to wear a mask for some reason. Um, so again, it's, you know, it, it's, it's sort of um, owning that and understanding that and, and, and maybe being able to come out from behind the mask and, um, and, and own it and speak out about who you are and the things that are important to you. Yeah, I, I think that's really interesting too because sometimes it's even in a much more subtle way, right? It's a mask of politeness. It's a mask of your insecurity and desire for acceptance to not necessarily uh, shoot from the hip and and be you know exactly from your heart and and maybe with more of a softer or better intention than we think of kind of the negative aspects of mask but that is still a part of like hiding an aspect of yourself from the people you care about most you know and i think to your point v it's it's something that if if you say you've never done that ever in your life i say that you're you know <laughs> waist deep in denial <laughs> exactly maybe you think you never did but you but you probably right. did <laughs> I mean I think it's something that a lot of people are trained to do as children and stuff like when you are out in public and like they say that your first five years are so formulative and like in those first five you learn nothing but like this is the mask you wear around other people right 
like this is how we behave at home this is how you behave at church this is how you behave at school all those things and kind of to your point Katie, it, it is it's trained and ingrained in us you know of what is appropriate in this particular moment yeah and I, and I mean some of that's okay i mean we don't you know we're we're civilized people right. um but you know sometimes um sometimes we get carried away with it and kind of get buried under it you know yeah I mean, how much worse has it gotten since social media became a thing? My Lord. <laughs> Would you cut loose? Yeah. This last year has been a really huge rocker on a lot of people. And it makes me wonder what it's going to be like when things really do open up, like everybody's vaccinated and we're able to kind of yeah. uh, move on. Like how many of these things that we've become quite used to in our isolation are going to become problematic when we're around each other? Yeah. Yeah. That, that's a scary thought because, you know, I mean, we, we try like where I work, we really try and always keep our cameras on when we're in meetings and stuff. So we're looking at each other and we're seeing each other's body language and, and all that. But, you know, um, social media has, has actually, <laughs> been a very important part of saving some people during isolation because it's really the only way they've had to reach out to other humans a, a lot of us you know so it, it's kind of that's kind of a double-edged sword as well because you know it, it's given us a way to communicate with one another but again it's another form of the mask right because everyone's life is perfect on facebook I mean, I've seen it a million zillion times where someone's, you know, it, it's my 15th wedding anniversary and, and, you know, my husband is my best friend. And, and this is someone that, you know, who's told me in private, yeah, I can't stand him. I think I'm going to be leaving sure. him soon. You know, and it's like, yeah. <laughs> but it's no, like I want everyone to think that their life is, you know, the Brady Bunch. And so, you know, a, another mask that we wear, we use social media that the same exact way. Yeah, yeah. I, I agree with that. And I think some of it for some people is a bit of self-actualization. You know what I mean? Like the, the thing they present on Facebook or what have you is, is kind of the, the goal or focus that they have, but maybe isn't there yet. And I think in some cases, it's just kind of how you said, heck, I think the opposite is true sometimes that some people feel more comfortable sharing the nitty gritty, darkest shit on Facebook than they do talking to their partner about it. You know what I mean? Like, I, I think that that's real too. And it is, it's, uh, there isn't like one simple checkbox for how this affects everyone other than the fact that you're right. I think it's something that we all do. It's a part of human nature to have these masks that sometimes we're not even aware of, you know? So I love that about the album and the idea of just challenging that the good and bad, the right and wrong, the entire spectrum of how we present these things. And then you giving a personal story about what you did with it or what you went through, you know? Yeah, well, and, it, and it's not, again, I'm, I'm not saying that, you know, wearing a mask is a bad thing. I mean, there's been several times in my life where I've had to put on a happy face for my kids. Sure. You know, I mean, going, going through a divorce, right? You, you know, you want to break down and cry sometimes right in front of your children. You want to say, you, you, you want to say those nasty things about your ex, but you can't because right. that's, you know, that's their, their parent too. So you really, yeah. you can't do that, you know? So um, yeah, you, you kind of, it's, it's it's an it's necessary to kind of you know use you know use the mask as a filter sometimes. Sure. Um, and that's that's not necessarily a bad thing. You know, it, I guess it's there when we need it. <laughs> I I think that's the whole maybe the the crux of the mask and how it is is for good or bad. Yeah. It's you thinking about how your actions are going to affect someone else. And sometimes, like you said, that's for a good reason of protection or. And sometimes that's protection of yourself, you know? And I, I think one way or another though, that, yeah, that's what it really comes down to is people use these as a form of armor or protection. And that's not always a bad thing because sometimes that's needed, you know? Um, yeah. Very interesting. Katie, did you have any other questions about the, uh, the, the mask or the album or the video or single? Because I wanted to talk uh, with Sphere about something else too. I mean, I would just, uh, I just have the one question left about like, 
um what aspect are you most excited about for the release like do you think you'll be playing shows when things do open up at un, like to promote the album or do you think this will be more of like a studio thing um I, well first of all I'm, I'm definitely excited about release night which is tonight right Whoa. the preview and then uh chris mack will be um playing it on his uh stimulate live stream later this evening so i'm super excited about that and i'm and I'm thrilled to see the excitement from other people in the community to want to uh, be a part of that. So lo loving that whole aspect of it. But um, it would be great to be able to use this video and any of the videos that I've made as visuals, sort of background visuals for a live show. Now, I, I haven't really performed live as Safira V. Um, I did do a lot of gigging back, way back in the day before I had kids. I, a lot of people know that I sort of took a 15 or so year break to raise my children. Sure. Um, so I was doing um, in totally different world back in the day. Um, there wasn't all the, the, the ability to uh, collaborate with other people across the world, across the country. It was, you know, back in the nineties. Um, so, you know, very, very different. Your, your circle of, of musician friends were the local people. Um, and I, and I have spoken to a, um, uh, a gentleman who is a local guy, um, Zach Burnett from Comrades. Mm -hmm. uh, he opened for Pig when Pig yep. played here in late 2019 uh, about doing some local gigs together. So that's kind of a goal. Um, we're sort of holding off yet because we just don't know okay. when or what or why, you know, none of us know. But um, that's definitely something I'm, I'm looking, if we can make it happen, I know he's got other tour plans, but if we can make it happen, it would be, yes, nice. Life is fucking relentless. It is, isn't it? <laughs> so, <laughs> but yeah, um, definitely looking forward to to using it uh, possibly as a live visual. Nice. Yeah. Awesome. So you have been, so we talked a lot about the mask and, and saw the video, but I mean, you've had quite a few recent releases and I wanted you to speak uh, for a second about By My Hand. Because you, you've had something new that, I mean, we've got you on. We might as well have you talk about this a little bit too. And, and this was a really exciting one because of some of the people that you had working with you on it. Um, tell me a little bit about this release and why it was exciting for you. Okay, well, I started um, considering doing some cover tunes um, last fall. Mm -hmm. um, the mask was written and it was with Jules and I was working with Jack to kind of Jack Alberson, migraine PR, um, migra you know, hit migraine PR, my publicist to kind of get the promo machine going. So I wasn't really um, writing any other music at that point. So I decided to do, um, I think first it was the cyanotic cover, Signal the Machines. Yep. And, um, and I had mentioned something about it on his group, their group, uh, uh, see a glitch modians. And, um, I think I, I think the question was, how should I release this, this cover? And Martin King, our good friend from dog tablet, yes. um, he responded with, why don't you have people do remixes? And I thought, whoa, you know, cover yeah. the remix cover. Um, so I, I asked right there and there was anyone who wanted to do a remix. So Eddie LaFlash from Decent News yep. responded and, um, Andrew Rizzo from Elfine, Elfine Generator Reality, Reality Generator, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> Andrew, um, they both responded and they did remixes. Um, Sean did have a little bit of interest, um, he mentioned maybe we need to mix this, but things got a little crazy in his life uh, when he got married. So uh, he's been oh, kind of yeah. busy. I, I know they they bought a house and everything. So um, so he he ended up not doing that. And then um, I decided it was still last year. Um, you know maybe I should just put one more cover on this on this EP. And uh, I had really really been enjoying um, Pig's Sex and Death. And it's such a huge, epic, industrial Bohemian Rhapsody type <laughs> song. Right. You know what I'm saying? Um, it was really a challenge for me, to be quite honest with you. I, and I talked to Raymond about it when I when I interviewed Raymond. Um, 
and he was like, oh, geez, I didn't realize. And I'm like, I, you know, yeah, it's, it's, it's a big, big song, you know, even just wow. um, standing it out afterwards to get it to Jules to mix, you know, it was, um, it took like, you know, the entire day. So, <laughs> um, so I was really happy to be able to do that. And I'm thrilled with how everything um, turned out. So I, I, you know, decided to just put, put it all together on an EP and um and just release it this year uh, those songs have been knocking around really since last october november um but i wanted to give the mask some time to sort of breathe before i released anything else yeah um so yeah that's um thanks for thanks for bringing it up yeah i'm yeah. proud of that work and, and, I sure and i love the fact that other people were helping me with it yeah, I'll make sure to drop a link uh, for that when we post the, the interview so that people can check that out and, and see uh, that kind of that other take or that other aspect, you know, because I think that's a lot of fun too. contrasting. You get done doing such a rip open your chest and show it all, um, mm -hmm. you know, personal album to then say, okay, now I'm going to take someone else's emotions and put my spin on them you know, and take some of maybe the emotional spoons of that off of, you know, previously doing something that was so deeply personal. Um, so I kind of really liked that transition and, and I think it felt really natural. Yeah, I, I like I said, I, I enjoyed doing both of them and Sean and Raymond both gave me positive feedback on the covers, which was fantastic. It's, it's not every day that, you know, the original artist um, hears your cover and tells right. you what, how they feel about it. So that was really special for me. I think that goes into another thing I wanted to ask you about is um, an, another way that I know you and a lot of people do is that you and, and Jimmy do the radio show, Melody Horror, uh, do the radio show together where you, you guys do so much to give back and share about other artists and interview them and talk with them. And, and really, you're a part of the, the scene and get to touch it in a lot of ways that, that I do. You know, and it, it's something that I've always respected and liked about you. Tell me the story of how you met young James and how <laughs> you, you became besties and uh -huh. musical compatriots. Yeah, so that was, um, that was probably early 2019. We met on a Discord server, which oh. uh, I think since, has since um, dismantled itself. But um, we were both members of this Discord server, and um, uh, I think I had put something out there and said, you know, you know, people give me feedback because I was really just kind of starting out, sure. and I, I, you know, I was I really had to relearn everything when I started this again. I didn't know how to use a, a DAW or anything like that, sure. and he was one of the people that kind of stepped up and, and gave me some advice, and we got to talking, and and we were kind of joking because. Um, <laughs> because we'd both been divorced um, multiple times. Yes. <laughs> so that was our, that was like our big bonding moment. I'm like, well, I've been divorced twice. He's like, well, I've been divorced three times, you know? So we're joking that, you know, between the, the two of us, we have five divorced. <laughs> yes. We talk about it all the time. It's like, it's no secret, you know, and we don't, we don't hide that kind of stuff. Sure. So we just kind of started chatting. And then um, that summer he had decided to, um, start his radio show and he asked me for some of my uh, material um, on Radio Dark Tunnel Situation mm -hmm. 47. So I, so I gave him some and I listened to the show and um, we, it, somewhere in that conversation, um, Venus McVie and Notorious Eric Von P was born. We, I, one day we were joking around about, hey, let's release a single under assumed porn names, you know? So, <laughs> We, and, and the names we had chosen originally, we've told the story before, but the names we had originally chosen were a, a variation of what we ended up with that were a little um, less family friendly. So, <laughs> so anyways, um, so that's how Eric and Venus started. But then, um, you know, I'd listen to the show every week and I'd be like, hey, you know, sh you should have mentioned that. And, you know, the release date for that was, was that. And he's like, why don't you just do this with me? <laughs> That's so, awesome. <laughs> so he invited me on and um, we've been doing this since December 2019. Wow. You know, honestly, of the way you guys are, and, and me and Colin have been on your show before, mm -hmm. and I mean, I listen mm -hmm. to it all the time. 
Um, I just the one you did recently, uh, the varying kind, who we also yeah. had on. That was that was great talk. Oh um, yeah. But it yeah. just seems like you guys have known each other for twenty years, and and I, I actually I didn't know that it hadn't been that long that you had been that tight because it is. It's every time I hear that show, I feel like it's a brother and sister kind yeah. of picking at each other and like. Oh yeah. 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 It, it, Virtual noogies, yeah. That's yeah sometimes you just meet those people and it instantly clicks like that, yeah. you know? So we feel, yeah, we feel very comfortable around each other. We're both fairly laid back people. Um, so, and I poke Jimmy that he's a little bit too laid back. Um, but you know, that, that's, that's, you know, that's our shtick, right? I'm, I'm nagging him about stuff and everything. So yeah, we, we feel very comfortable with each other personally. We love working together. Um, musically, um, again, we've, we've got our little side project. Sure. Um, we actually did a song together um, for the next Dog Tablet album, Pearl Drop Blue. There'll be a track where the two of us are so doing excited. a duet. Yeah. yeah. I'm so excited yeah. for that record. That That's going to be a great, and just in general, that record I am geeked for. I. Oh yeah. Uh, Martin is just a next level amazing ear in how he Martin. can make yeah. a, a song like that and just swirl it together and have all the pieces sync up just right. I love how you use the word swirl because that is, that's, that, that's a great word to describe that vibe that they have, um, yeah. Martin and, and Bob. And you know, and Bob's, Bob's very quiet. He's never on social media, right. um, but he's such a huge part of that sound too. Yeah. You know, and then you, you throw Jared in there yeah. with, uh, he's such a poet. You know, I, I, I love his lyrics, um, <clears throat> love the sound of his voice. Um, and then he's got some other really great artists um, on Pearl Drop Blue. He's got Cat Hall doing um, I love two, her. two tracks, you know, and Jimmy's been working with Cat and Cat and, and I actually collaborated on a single last year. I haven't released it yet because I'm waiting for one more remix from Jim Marcus that hasn't come back yet. So, and, and that one we're, will actually be to um, benefit um, cervical cancer. Um, Very cool. Kat herself is a survivor. Awesome. Jim's mother passed away from cervical cancer. So, um, yeah, I'm excited to get that out the door eventually. <laughs> uh, no, it, she's, she's really amazing. I'll tell you that newest single that she did with um, Jimmy. Uh, Damage. Yeah. To me, I mean, she's worked with Jim Marcus, with information society, I mean, some of the yeah. best in the business, but yeah. I felt like the song that Jimmy did for her mm -hmm. was letting her voice off the leash for the first time that, that to me, I felt like I really heard Kat's best version. Her, in, yeah. You know what I mean? And I heard a lot of her, and I really like it. It's all very good, but it just felt like she was really in sync with the music happening. And, and that was perfect. I think that's one of the other things that he does really, really well. Cause I've heard, you know, he does the same with you, you know, is I think he has this real ear for how to bring the best out of singers, you know, and put them in a comfortable place. Well, and she had mentioned um, when we interviewed her last September, not last September, yeah, last September that, um, she wanted to get a little bit harder with, with yeah. you know, the, the music. And I had, the song I wrote for her um, was pretty industrial sounding. Yeah. Um, but, and we knew Jimmy could absolutely, you know, do the same for her. So she really unleashed, um, you know, she's got a nice growl in there in, in certain places. Um, a lot of great remixes. Of course, I, uh, Dog Tablet did a remix. That's how they, that's how Martin first heard Cat's voice and said, oh, I got to get you on the next album. Um, I did a remix. A um, lot of a lot of really talented people did remixes for uh, First Assault and Second Assault. It's actually two yeah. releases that they did right. of Damage. Um, ESA did a remix for it. Just That's I know, awesome. really. We're having him on soon. He's going to be on the podcast coming up here soon. Oh, um, good! I'm glad. Yeah, yeah and Pat yeah. is actually singing backup vocals on an Amaranth song on the upcoming album. And I'll tell you, when she sent the stems back and I heard it against my, I'm like, what the fuck am I still doing in this song? We should. Yeah. <laughs> I know, it's crazy. I know. <laughs> Wait, I why know. do we need me here at all? Come on. I know. She, she gives you like 30 stems and it's like, oh, yeah. You can't she got it back to not me, like, use two days, one of them because like, they're all gorgeous. You know? <laughs> I was like, you just rock this in a weekend? Like, damn it. Oh, yeah. She's, she's got a process. 
yeah, oh, yeah. she does she does it all pretty quickly so and and sounds great always sounds great cool <laughs> yes is there anything else that uh y'all want to talk about in this interview so um many. i i could mention the the duet you please can... do please do okay okay <laughs> so yeah so after all right so we the the, the thing I'm doing with Cat will probably be released this summer if I can get Jim's remix back. Um, I've got uh, the remix complement to the mask called Unmasked coming up in April. Um, ton of great remixers, again, Dog Tablet, um, ESA, Chris Smack, um, Ed Finkler, Dead Agent. Um, just a, a lot of three women producers, and I'm so proud of them, um, Evie Carpenter, Bess Arlinda and M. Baker from Plyke. Um, I, I want to get more women in the remix game. So I'm, you know, I'm, I'm walking the walk and I'm having, I'm recruiting and having them, uh, they all did remixes for the album as well. So that comes out in April and then in May, um, hopefully in May, I'll be releasing an EP called Duet. And that's literally me working with an, another artist on each track. Um, one is with Chris Connolly, and we, we literally do a vocal duet on it, and I, I wrote the music. Um, another track is with Mike Reedy, and I wrote the music, he does the vocals. And then um, Jim Simonic is still working on his track. Um, he's got the music that I sent him, he's working on the vocals. So it'll be those three originals, and then of course, remixes. I've already yeah. signed a couple people up to do remixes. So that will be out in May, and then Cat Hall, and then, of course, another Severe of You release later in the year. <laughs> so much to look forward to. Yeah, that's awesome. This is yeah, exciting. I, I can't stop writing. I was telling someone this actually just last night. I, people tell me, you know, you got to take a break sometime. You got to step away from it. And, and you do. You really do. But I think my 15 years off just, just built up all this stuff inside me, and this is just me puking it out everywhere I, so. <laughs> I feel that exactly like I hear you because I did the same thing right I mean I took yeah it was probably more like 17 or 18 years off mm -hmm. in between and when you get going I, I feel like now I never run out of ideas or lyrics I'm sure it'll happen but as of now that's just it like there's always something else coming because I think I took so long without putting wear on my mental muscles like that of you know, being creative and writing songs. And I hear that 100%. And I think you should just keep churning out everything that comes to you because I mean, it's all great stuff. Um, I, I, I think you just, you have this amazing style mixing the like swanky, like sultry girl on a piano lounge singer in a dress like kind of- Love that. But then that. mixing that with like a true like hair done out, like punch you in the fucking face with a, you know, chain, you know, leather <laughs> wrist strap or something. And, and those aren't two things I think of that belong together, like that sheer, mm -hmm. like two sides of a possible attitude. And you somehow find a way to coalesce them and bring them together. And I think that's the total power of your music sphere is, you know, just the way you do that. Um, so I, I'm really excited for all the things that you have coming up here. Um, do you have any other uh, parting thoughts, hopes, dreams that you <laughs> want to share with the children? Um, no, not really. I just, I, I, I love how you brought up the fact that we kind of both took a break and our, you know, our brains are just bulging to get more music out there because I feel like we both lived a lot of life in that time. Sure. And um, Very different so, life, I think, but. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, but we have all those experiences to, to draw on that we hadn't, you know, hadn't had any sort of outlet for. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I you know, I don't see myself um, slowing down anytime. Although, you know, again, people keep telling me you probably should just kind of slow down a little bit. But, you know, I, when that, I, I think it'll just happen naturally. You know, at some point I'll be like, okay, I think um, I've told every story I need to tell for now. I'm going to kind of sit back and let more stories come to me and then um, let those out when the, when the time comes, you know. But yeah, thank you so much, Katie and Ken, for having me. 
Um, Sounds and Shadows, love you guys. Absolutely, you do such great work for the community and you know, you know, we're, we're brothers and sisters in arms um, with supporting the community. We, we are all people who are very excited about the community itself and, and understand the, um, the importance of, of raising everybody up together because that gives us a better chance of all of us, you know, being heard and gaining some sort of success. Yeah. So um, love that vibe about you guys. I appreciate that. And it was great to have you on here. And and I love that we can just keep flip-flopping back and forth. You know, Katie has an album that's going to be coming out very soon, which is amazing for her band, Katie Needs a Life. She needs to come on uh, Situation 40 and do that then. Absolutely, Katie. We, we kind of talked about that on Facebook. You had a question. What was it? Oh, about I think it was about videos, right? I mean, about- it's like more like how do how do artists these days like find press that helps them because like katie needs a life's music is like more of a collaborative thing um with the other bandmates now where i wrote all this music a long time ago and now we're putting it together as like a full band and stuff and i'm really excited because this is like 14 years in the making to have this one album be done and I don't yep. want to fuck it up, but I'm not like really bad at self-promotion. I've always been somebody who's, who works in the shadows, you know, no pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> well, you have the perfect vehicle here, you know, um, and you know, with sounds and shadows and um, you, you know, you're welcome on situation 47, but yeah, I mean, get, get that music out to the DJs. There's a ton of lists out there. I can, you know, help you with that. Um, I'm sure the DJs would be, you know, thrilled to, to have it. They all know who you guys are. So, you know, just get, get your, get yourself out there. I know it's hard. It's hard for some people, but yeah. you got to do it. You got to do it. The anticipation. <laughs> How many Rocky Horror Picture Show references can we make in a podcast? You know, that's what I want to know. <laughs> I think 16. Yeah, I think, 16. I think we can do it. Yeah. Well, uh, it is truly a pleasure to talk to you another beastly uh, name in the field that is a woman. Uh, it makes yeah. me really optimistic for the things that can await my future. And when it comes to like you churning out the content and stuff, like get it out there because yeah. from like my own personal world, if I don't like make it happen when I'm thinking of it, then I'll just forget. And that's like a piece of me that's just lost in the cosmos now. Yeah, I know. I, it's a good thing that we have phones now where we can like leave ourselves little notes because I find myself singing in my phone a lot these days when I have like a musical idea. Um, you know, <laughs> you got to just, like you said, when, when, it ha- when it comes to you, just get it out there somehow. Yeah. I mean, like there are some things that it's like, maybe this idea doesn't work now. And then it just like comes to you in a dream and you're like, this is the perfect thing for this new song. And it's already yeah. there, you know? Yeah. It was a pleasure talking to you today. Uh, we've come to the end of the interview time for this new video, but I'm really excited for the future and to hear more from you and to potentially come and visit in Rochester and see you live on stage. There's so many things to look forward to. You she could was- ask her to remix you for Ooh. Katie. Yes. Yes. I, I, I absolutely do remixes. I've okay. done a bunch of them. So yeah, if, you, uh, if you're interested, let me know. Really Bring me up. I will. I will. Uh, Colin has all of the stems, so I might do that because there's this one song called "I'm Going Down," and I feel like it would be pretty fun. But oh, cool! Rush that beat. Like honestly, I love that. That's my favorite one. Off the like, it just gets me in the feels from her album, and I think you could crush that. Love it. Love. It. I love working with other people's voices. I get so tired of working with my own. <laughs> I think that's why I did duet because it's like, please let me work with someone else's voice. And the only time I get to do that is when I do remixes. Yeah. So I I think that's one of the reasons I enjoy it. Well, let's do this thing. Yeah. To all of you (laughs) darklings that have been watching us today. Thank you so much for tuning in. Don't forget to like, follow and subscribe so that you can be on top of all of our new videos as they come out with wonderful guests like Sphera V. Yes. Uh, Ken, do you want to give the end tag? Yeah, uh, leave a comment below on whether Redhead pulling it off Mm -hmm. 
and, or no. And also keep it fucking dark, yo.